Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest is Miriam Benraj. She's an expert on Iraq, a fellow at the Paris School of Political uh, Science. She's the author of a book uh, just published in French. I'll translate it. It's the best translation I could find is Iraq, the Revenge of uh, History. Thank you very much uh, for uh, being uh, with us. Uh, clearly, Iraq is still uh, in flux. Uh, there's still war on Iraq. Some would say civil war. Would you say uh, that there is a civil war going on in Iraq, or it's something else? Well, I, well, there's a there's a very uh, very uh, high level conflict. Let's say. I mean, people have been discussing the argument uh, of the civil war for years, and there's clearly uh, a sectarian war ongoing. Uh, there's also once a war again. Once, but it's been ongoing for now more than a decade. Uh, there's also a number of conflicts that are more or less related to um, conflicting perceptions of what the Iraqi state should be, and this has been ongoing also since 2003. So I would say there's a mix, a combination of very complex dynamic, uh, com conflictual dynamics on the ground, which, make it very, which makes it very difficult to um, uh, find, to study, to analyze uh, this country and understand what's going on. Um, but it, it goes much beyond sectarianism uh, alone. Um, as we are seeing, there's also uh, an opposition today between forces uh, that promote centralism or return to a centralized state uh, with a tendency to authoritarianism, as we've seen with the former Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki, and then uh, a push for more federalism, which of course uh, was the card of the Kurds um, who, since the beginning of the war, uh, have pushed for uh, federalism as a way to uh, reinforce their autonomy in the north. But it's also the case for a number of southern provinces uh, in the Shi south, and today of a number of uh, Sunnis uh, uh, who consider that uh, the central state uh, has basically failed to reintegrate them and that autonomy might be uh, the solution, including the solution against uh, the Islamic State. Right. Uh, so do you see Iraq united in the near future, or is there really a risk of fragmentation of, of Iraq? Because, uh, as you say, those tensions have been there basically since uh, the fall of uh, Saddam Hussein, but they seem uh, to be as high as they've ever been. Well, the, 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 the thesis of a, of a fragmentation or partition of Iraq has been there also uh, for very long. Um, this has been at basically the core of, of US, the U.S. debate on what the Americans uh, should have done. Uh, this, uh, this idea of a soft partition came from uh, the U.S. But they itself. didn't implement it. They wanted they Iraq to stay as a whole. It. Yes, and at the same time, they promoted these very communal lines uh, regarding the reordering uh, on the political level of the country, uh, regarding a number of other issues. They had no plan for reconciliation when they first came, uh, which was a problem because reconciliation basically became a debasification with all uh, uh, the problems that uh, uh, have followed. And um, regarding partition, um, it's a very complex issue as well. It's not, uh, it's not a tripartition between Kurds. Uh, Shia and Sunna, as uh, uh, some uh, analysts have uh, That's argued. overly simplistic. It's very simplistic. Um, there are, I think, uh, today, again, dynamics, tendencies towards uh, uh, devolution. But this devolution is, uh, takes sometimes the form of regionalism. Regional local identities. Wouldn't uh, that be a good recipe? I, I think, um, well, I don't think if it's the good recipe, but I think it's illusionary to, 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 to think that we are again going to come back to a centralized Iraq, which was no longer the case, by the way, uh, as of the, the, the 90s. Already under the embargo, uh, Iraq was no longer uh, that centralized state. Uh, that it used to be in the 70s until, I would say, the 70s. Uh, the country was very divided already. So the Americans inherited from this history as well, this history of national deconstruction, of fragmentation, of authoritarianism. So let's be fair to history. It's, it's a shared responsibility. And at the same time, there's a clear challenge now for the Iraqis as a whole to uh, consider what the options are, to discuss them seriously, especially in the context of a jihadist offensive right. that is still uh, Well, that, that's, that was my next uh, question, uh, because the new factor that hasn't been there is uh, Daesh, the organization of the Islamic State. In a way, could it be a unifying factor be between all those bickering uh, entities? We've seen the Kurds uh, find an agreement, or at least 
on paper uh, with the central government over a very long dispute on, on the oil revenue. Uh, we've seen uh, now uh, Shia militias going to fight uh, Daesh. Is this maybe the best way to unite Iraqis right now? Um, well, the Islamic State at least uh, has been perceived for some time by Sunnis uh, as the solution. I mean, at least a part of the Sunni population, which, as I said, was marginalized after 2003, uh, which also has a problem of political representation. Um, the moderate voices have been uh, suppressed also uh, uh, due to the pro-Shi, uh, sectarian and authoritarian policy of the former uh, prime minister. And of uh, the Nouri current Maliki. one, would you say the same thing Well, for the current regarding prime the current one, uh, I'm not sure that many Sunnis are satisfied with the new government. They don't see any, uh, any change, which further reinforces the power, the strength of the Islamic State, uh, be it military or ideological, because this Islamic State precisely presents itself as the solution, as the state that in a way substitutes itself to the existing state in Baghdad, which is seen as an apostate government and as um, a government which again has uh, for years marginalized uh, the Sunnis and more than that, uh, that has um, um, that has basically violated their rights, uh, that has detained a number of prisoners uh, without trials, etc., etc. The, the list of grievances is very long. Right. And which uh, sorry for, for yes. jumping in, but there's also uh, people have uh, said who know the country and you know the country well that there's also been, uh, as you were just saying, uh, some people uh, from uh, the old Saddam Hussein regime who have joined hands uh, with uh, Daesh to uh, be. Uh, the people who would defend uh, the Sunni minority against an Iran-backed uh, mm -hmm. government in Baghdad. Yes, that's true. The insurgency as it started was a mix of different uh, ideologies. You had some bassists, some uh, officers uh, uh, who found themselves uh, without a job and a horizon after the, the dismantlement uh, of, the, of the Iraqi army in 2003. There were Islamists, uh, local, but also a number of uh, foreign uh, jihadists who uh, gravitated towards Iraq to fight the Americans. Uh, but there's been one uh, very clear phenomenon. All these people have, uh, let's say, as of 2005, 2006, converged towards a Salafist jihadist a view of what the struggle should be. So the struggle should continue against the Americans, but it also became a sectarian struggle against the Shah and this government which is seen as an extension of, 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 of the, the Iranian regime of Tehran, and which further again um, uh, feeds this uh, perception among the Sunnis that they have no future in Iraq except uh, under the umbrella of this Islamic State. Was there a missed opportunity uh, after uh, the very, very brutal uh, violence we saw in 2005, 2006, and there was this willingness, the so-called awakening, uh, you know, where m Sunni militias or Sunni tribes were armed uh, to fight uh, Al-Qaeda, and then they were supposed to become part of a national uh, security apparatus. This did not happen. And do you think this was really the, the missed opportunity that makes Sunnis feel that they're stigmatized, that they're not part of uh, the power in mm -hmm. Iraq right now? There were three uh, missed opportunities. The first missed opportunity was the reconciliation advocated by Maliki, which uh, very clearly uh, turned, uh, turned out to be a facade. Uh, he had promised to bring reconciliation to the Iraqis in 2006. This, this, this did not happen. Then there, there was, as you said, the Sahwa, the uh, tribal awakening against the Islamic State, which was basically the result of political uh, infighting uh, in, in Sunni regions, but also the result of uh, an economic uh, struggle around uh, oil smuggling between the two uh, forces. And these tribes, um, defeated uh, the Islamic State and the jihadists in a number of, uh, of, of areas. Uh, and uh, the American ha army at the time had promised them to integrate them into the army, the security forces, but once they were transferred to uh, the Iraqi government in 2008, this did not happen. So the tribes saw that as a, a, a dual double, um, in or a way, a betrayal, a treason, betrayal yeah. uh, from the Americans and from the Iraqi government, which led them to embrace uh, jihad again and to, uh, to basically let the jihadists conquer uh, their localities uh, in, 2000 and in 2014. Right. Uh, so right now uh, there's a willingness uh, for the uh, central Iraqi government to attack uh, 
Mosul, which was taken, obviously, in a spectacular way by uh, the Organization of the Islamic State several uh, months ago. Let's assume this works out militarily. What needs to happen then to make sure the Sunnis feel they're really part of Iraq? Well, first, uh, if, we can, if, we, if Mosul is retaken and the Islamic State defeated, this will be a major symbolic uh, victory, obviously. But this, do, this does not mean that this will solve, the, as I said, the problem, the issue of Sunni representativity. The, the problem is that today, beyond the policy, which is the one of the present government, you have no um, alternate, alternative, uh, politically speaking. Uh, the Muslim brothers, uh, who more or less were uh, the moderate expression of, of Sunni Islamism, were uh, suppressed by the, by the central power. Uh, and uh, we've seen that when Maliki um, launched a mandate uh, against uh, the former Vice President Tariq al-Hashimi, who was uh, historically a Muslim brother. Um, the nationalist forces, they've been out of the game for a long time. So who is representing the Sunnis today? That's the real question. And, um, and, and this is not clear. This is not clear. The tribes might be the solution. This is the card being played today by the coalition. But uh, the Islamic State uh, is responding by what? By killing hundreds of tribesmen. So I would say that um, after more than a decade, again, of, of, of Sunni marginalization and constant suppression of alternatives, um, the long-term solution is not, for the moment, in my view, is not there. Uh, beyond military uh, operations. Okay, we'll have to see what happens on the ground. Obviously, a very volatile situation in Iraq and in the neighboring countries. Miriam Benrad, thank you very much for thank coming you. on the France 24 Set. Thank you very much for watching this interview. Stay tuned for more news.